Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Alright, and welcome to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network, and I am your host, Jesse Tapia. Alright, it is Friday. Friday is always the funner show to do just because it's the end of the week, but either way, here we are. We got March Madness going on. Bunch of good games that went on last night. Arizona pretty much ruined my bracket. I mean, this year, though, is kind of a weird year as far as brackets go because I kind of realized, you know what, there's no point in making a bracket because none of us are ever going to get it 100% right and we're all going to get everything wrong on the first day of the uh, tournament. So, kind of that mentality now. The only reason why I made a bracket this year was because uh, one of my buddies asked me to be in his groups. So I did. Picked Arizona to win it all against Duke in the championship and figured, you know what, DeAndre Ayton is going to be the story of the tournament. and going to go off, pretty much do everything he needs to do. And they lose to Buffalo. So we talk about that in the first segment, all the other games going on um, from yesterday, from yeah Thursday in March Madness for the first segment. Second segment, we're going to be recapping yesterday's NBA games, which was Thursdays. When, um, third segment, we'll be talking about the pretty much how we're going to do it every Friday show. Talk about the teams this week that are trending up and trending down. All right, so we'll be doing that. In the fourth segment, we'll pretty much up give an update on how the college games going on today. Um, we're going, we'll be doing that, making my picks for tonight's NBA games, and pretty much talking about anything else going on in the world of basketball. All right, so that's pretty much how today's show is going to go. It'll be a pretty fun one, but either way, let's get into it. All right, like I said, I mean, Arizona, to me, I figured, really athletic team, best team in the Pac-12, all right, was going to finally make some noise this year. And Arizona, year after year, I don't know why I haven't um, learned yet, but to be honest with you guys, I pick Arizona, I feel, in, in at least one of, like, this is like like I said, this year was the first time I only did one bracket, but usually I do a few um, in the years past, and I always pick Arizona to win in one of my brackets. I always think Arizona is that team that's finally going to make it over, finally going to get it done, and finally going to, like, realize, like, understand how to play in the tournament. And year after year after year, I'm wrong, all right? My buddy, my buddy on Twitter, he DM'd me uh, one of Skip Bayless' tweets. Um, I had uh, Skip Bayless talking about how Arizona was his pick for the tournament. I should have just gave up right there. All right, as soon as Skip Bayless said that he was picking Arizona, I should have just been like, you know what? It's not going to work out. Let me pick a different team, and we'll be all good. But turns out, no, I didn't. I was like, nope, Skip might actually be right on this one. Yeah, Skip Bayless got Arizona knocked out in the first round. They played Buffalo, too. All right, 13th seeded Buffalo. All right, Arizona was, ranked, uh, was seeded number four. They lose 89-68, and Buffalo in the first, like, it was a close game in the first half, and like I said, this, that's pretty bad to talk about if you're Arizona. It was a close game in the first half against a Buffalo team, all right? Arizona should be out here beating teams like this easily, but nonetheless, I mean, they're out here struggling. First half, I think they were down, like, 43-40, I think it was, or whatever, at the end of the first, and the second half, I mean, Arizona comes out flat, Buffalo comes out hot still. And Buffalo pulls away. I mean, they won this game by 21 points. It was ridiculous. It's pretty much like you were waiting for Arizona to come back. And you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting. And then just all as soon as you know it, game's over. All right, Arizona loses. It was just ridiculous. I mean, I was watching the game, and I'm yelling at the TV, give the ball to Aiton. All right, give the ball to Aiton. I think it was, his name was, uh, what, Alonzo Trier, I think he is. Might be a lottery pick this year. It seemed like he went... Four for 15, I think it was. Stop shooting the ball. Give it to your best player. I feel like these perimeter players for Arizona were trying their hardest to show it's not all about eight and we can do it too. And that was the dumbest thing I've seen in any college basketball game. I mean, how is your game plan not to get it to the seven footer who looks like he's 35 years old just dominating against all these 19 year olds? DeAndre Ayton is by far the best player in the country right now. And. Arizona just refused to give him the ball. It was just ridiculous. Literally every time, all right? 
Buffalo had guys like 6'9", 6'8", trying to guard Aiton. There was obviously a size advantage and a mismatch, but for some reason, whenever he's going up to post up, Arizona is refusing to give him the ball. All right, just refusing. He had like, I think, 17, 14 points, 13 rebounds, something like that. And, I mean, the dude was just, he barely got the ball. No usage whatsoever, and he still had a decent game. All right, if Arizona gets him the ball a whole lot more, they win this game. That's all it was. I mean, Aiden only took 13 shots. Trier took 15. All right, Aiden's got to get the ball more. All right, 14 points, 13 rebounds. He needs the ball more. Okay, and the rest of the team didn't do well here. None of the um, perimeter players played well. They only hit, let's see, uh, 7, 11 out of the 33 shots for a total of 25 points. All right, the two big men on that on Arizona combined for 30 points on a way better field goal percentage. They combined 13 for 21, all right, 17 rebounds, and like I said, 30 points. Get the ball to those guys. I literally feel like this was Arizona's perimeter players trying to say, you know what, we can do this too. We don't need those guys. Watch us do it. All right. It's just it's just ridiculous how it ended up, how Arizona got knocked out in the first round. I understand, like, next round, like, if they were to win this game and they lose to Kentucky the next round, because people are like, oh, it might happen there. But for you to get knocked out in the first round by Buffalo is just ridiculous. Now Aiden's going to be um, heading into the draft, obviously. So is Trier. And, I mean, Aiton, for me, is the number one pick in the draft, and it's not even close. All right, the dude is a monster. You got to fix up his defense a bit. That's one thing he struggles with, but, I mean, going into the NBA, no one really plays defense there, and I'm sure that's something he could develop just with some effort. All right, so he's going to be going into the draft, and uh, one of my buddies texted me yesterday saying, would you rather Aiton go to Phoenix, Memphis, or Atlanta? All right, and that's honestly so sad. I'd rather him not go to either team. I'd like to see him end up with a team like the Kings. All right, if Aiton were to go to the Kings, the Kings would be a not very good team, but they'd be, they'd be, they'd be an up and coming team. All right, you'd have De'Aaron Fox, Boan Bogdanovich, Justin Jackson. You got Buddy Hield off the bench. You probably need another four, um, a four player. Scalabi is all right, but I feel he's more suited off the bench there. So you need a starting four, and then you have Aiton at the five. All right, you can probably trade Willie Cauley Stein for whatever you can get for him and not even have to worry about him. But imagine Aiton, Fox, Bogdanovich, and the healed off the bench. You got Justin Jackson, too, who's been playing well this season. That'd be a good team. All right, I'd rather see Aiton go to, let's see, who are the bad teams? Like, a team like the Magic. I don't know. I feel like Aiton on the Magic can, would change some, some things up there. But, I mean, Aaron Gordon's going to be a restricted free agent, so he could very well be out of his way there. Let's see. I think, honestly, I think the Kings would be the best spot for DeAndre Aiton as far as, um, Playing, not even just playing well, because I think he's going to be a beast wherever he goes, but as far as just winning games, at least a little bit, all right? If the Kings were to get Aiden, somehow get lucky in the lottery and get that first pick, or some dumb team decides to not take him one or two or whatever like that, and he falls to the Kings, the Kings are going to be pretty much, that's like a pot of gold right there they'd get. Yeah, I'd really like to see him with the Kings, but in reality, it probably is going to be the Grizzlies, Hawks, or Suns, and if I had to pick out of those three, I mean, it'd be the Suns. I like the Suns. Are their their problem is why they're consistently bad. They have a terrible front office, and they never able are able to seem to hire a good head coach. All right, that's been their biggest problem. It's not the talent. You got Devin Booker, you got T.J. Warren, you got uh, Josh Jackson. All right, you got a you got a nice little core young players, and for some reason this team, as far as the front office and coaching goes, just can't get it right. All right. They need a clean house as far as the front office goes and need to bring in a whole bunch of new guys, then bring in a solid head coach, and then draft Aiden. All right, I'd rather see Aiden on the Suns than the Grizzlies and the Hawks because Aiden on the Hawks is pretty much just going to be a waste. All right, the Hawks aren't going to be good anytime soon. They literally need to start over at every position. Maybe not point guard because Dennis Schroeder, I mean, he has some playoff experience and he has played well in the playoffs before, but... I mean, Schroeder and Aiton, you're still going to be bad for a few years. And then that goes with the Grizzlies, too. The Grizzlies, I mean, they're always that gritty team. But they're past that. I mean, maybe if Mike Conley comes back next year healthy and all that, they'll be good. Marcus Gasol's past his prime, so I guess you put Aiton there. Aiton and Conley might be a little bit better. But either way, I think he'd be better on the Suns. And I think they'd be more competitive. Like, the Suns would be the most competitive team with Aiton rather than the Grizzlies and um, Hawks. But like I said, I mean, I'd rather see him go to the Kings. I feel like that's where he would... um. He would really thrive there. Let's see what other teams, what other teams are really bad that might have a chance at, um, at getting him. I mean, like I said, the Magic possibly, but the Magic just don't do well as far as they know how to draft talent. I would say, but they don't know how to develop it enough to where everyone starts getting good. So I mean, you got the Mavericks, the Kings, Phoenix, Memphis, 
Chicago would be a fun team to see him on, but I highly doubt that happens. I mean, even, let's see, if the Brooklyn Nets, they're, they got 47 losses, only 21 wins. All right, they're a half game behind Orlando for the higher lottery position or whatever. About two, a game back of the, a game and a half back of Atlanta, and a few, like a couple, three games back of Phoenix and Memphis. So, Brooklyn's really, or Cleveland, I should say, they're probably going to end up with maybe Bagley. Colin Sexton's pretty good, too. Yeah, yesterday I was watching the, um, Watching the Alabama game against Virginia Tech. Had a nice little wager on that one with one of my buddies there. But either way, he took the Tech. I was like, yeah, I'm taking Alabama for sure. Just because of the fact that Avery Johnson has roll tied playing good basketball. All right. Never would have expected it. Never would have, not Avery Johnson turning this team into a solid team. But just Alabama playing good, being good at basketball. They're a big football. They're, they're a football school. We all know that. And here they are. You got Colin Sexton playing well and that whole team playing well. And they knocked off Virginia Tech. But like I said, um, Colin Sexton could be a good player for the Cavs next season. That's maybe one way you get to keep LeBron if you bring in Colin Sexton. And even then, so I mean, you bring Colin Sexton. Cleveland's not going to be as bad as they were when they had Kyrie just because of the fact that they still have this team without LeBron would be better than the team Kyrie had without LeBron because of the fact that Kyrie had nothing to work with. I think he had Tristan Thompson and that was it. I think uh, when Deion Waiters on that team at one point too, so it just really just it was a bad team there. But either way, yeah, Cavs would be a t- um, good fit for Colin Sexton there because they do need a point guard. With or without LeBron, they do need a point guard. I mean, right now you got George Hill, but he has no future with that team, I don't think. So either way there, Bagley played pretty well for Duke yesterday. Let's see. Let's go over the scores from yesterday, actually. We had, like I said, Duke beat Iona, 89-67. Gonzaga barely beat UNC Greensboro, 68-64. That was a close one throughout. Uh, Villanova beat Radford, 87-61. Kansas beat Penn, 76-60. Penn, Penn had that game pretty close in the second half, and then all of a sudden you just see Kansas breaking off. Like I said, Buffalo knocked off Arizona, 89-68. Just a garbage game from Arizona there. Wright State lost to Tennessee, 73-47. Texas Tech knocked off Stephen uh, Stephen F. Austin, 70-60. to 60. Ohio State beat South Dakota State, 81-73. to 73. Kentucky beat Davidson, 78-73. Davidson just couldn't hit the shots when it mattered most. All right, Got open a whole bunch of times, just couldn't get that one shot to put them ahead. Houston beat San Diego State in a crazy game. I mean, you had one of the players from San Diego State in like the last couple of, like the last minute literally hit a three. All right, Houston comes back, hits another three. San Diego comes back, hits another three. And then uh, uh, one of Houston players goes up to hit the game-winning layup. And it's over there, 67-65. Loyola Chicago hit the game winner against Miami, 64-62. Game winning three at the end. And then you had the waste of a pick here. Waste from the committee putting Oklahoma in. They lost to Rhode Island, 83-78 to in overtime. Trey Young played pretty well in this one. Trey Young, that's a player where <clears throat> he'll probably end up with the Bulls or the Knicks. And I think Trey Young is a good player. I just think he's a bit overhyped just because of how often uh, ESPN tries to promote him. But I think if he ends up with the Knicks, that'd be a solid little option for them there. Like, But they do have Neil Aquina and Moutier, so I guess it might not work there. You, they did sign Tim Hardaway Jr. to a long-term deal. So I don't know. I feel like in the NBA, no matter what you have, you have to go for the best available player. And Trey Young at that point would be the best available player. And I feel like you'd probably trade a Neil Aquina or a Moutier and start Young. All right, because with a core of Young, Hardaway Jr., and Kristaps, whenever he does come back, that'd be pretty solid there for the Knicks. So Trey Young might be a good fit for the Knicks there. And again, I know they have Neil Aquina and Moutier, but I think Young is better than both of those guys. Then you had Seton Hall knocking off NC State, 94-83. Like I said, Alabama knocked off Virginia Tech, 86-83. That was a fun game to watch there. Alabama, for the last couple of minutes, had the lead for pretty much the rest of the time being, but Virginia Tech was starting to make, was trying to make a run, just couldn't get those key stops. And you had Florida knock off my sleeper team, St. Bonaventure. 77-62. Like I said, this is why I don't pick brackets or like picking brackets stuff because I'm always wrong about it. But that's pretty much all that happened yesterday in March Madness. All right, it's a fun tournament. I enjoy watching it. I'm watching the games right now as I'm talking to you guys. All right, it's a bunch of fun. But either way, that's going to wrap it up for this segment. Like I said, DeAndre Ayn should be the number one pick this year. Would rather see him with the Kings than anyone else, but he's probably going to end up with like the Hawks and Grizzlies and just waste there. So either way, that's going to wrap it up. Next segment, we'll be recapping yesterday's NBA games, which was Thursday. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back.
Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines, they got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. In that first segment, we spent it talking about March Madness, one of the best times of the year, all right, the month of March. We got St. Patrick's Day, which is actually the day I did not realize that. St. Patrick's Day was a bigger deal when I was in elementary school, I feel. Uh, I used to give out pickles and stuff like that. I really don't understand why they gave out pickles on St. Patrick's Day now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe because it was green, but either way, it was always fun to go out there. I used to work my... Celtics jerseys and all that, but either way, like I said, it's St. Patrick's Day. Now it's a little bit more funner as you get older, obviously, but here we are. All right, for this segment, we're going to be talking, what are we talking? You're talking yesterday's NBA games, going to recap, be recapping those, so let's get into it. All right, so first up, we have the Toronto Raptors facing off with the Indiana Pacers in Indiana, and no surprises here, Toronto won this one, 106-99. to For Toronto, you had Serge Ibaka with 13 points, 11 rebounds, shot 5 of 13, 3 of 8 from the three-point line. Jonas Valanciunas had 16 points, 17 rebounds, 5 of 14 shooting there. Kyle Lowry, not the best shooting night from him. 3 of 10 from the field, 3 of 7 from the three-point line, 6 rebounds, 6 assists, 13 points. DeMar DeRozan had 24 points, 7 assists, 4 rebounds, shot 8 of 15, 2 of 5 from the three-point line. And then for the paper, or Pacers, not the Papers, the Pacers, you had Thaddeus Young with 13 points, 6, um, six rebounds, shot 6 of 13. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich had 6 points. Is it? I think it's Bon. Bon Bogdanovich. I always get their names mixed up. I need to figure it out. But Bon Bogdanovich had six points, one to ten shooting, one of four from the three point line. Miles Turner only played twenty minutes in this one, went one for two, two points, no rebounds, no assists. Just not a great game there. Not even sure if he left that game hurt. Either way, it might re um might be the reason why he just was empty on the stat sheet here. Corey Joseph had six points, four assists, three rebounds, shot two of seven from the field, one of four from the three-point line. Victor Oladipo had a nice little shooting night here. Eight of 19 from the field, one of four from the three-point line, five rebounds, 18 points. Nothing too big, just a nice little average game from him. Al Jefferson off the bench had 20 points, 12 rebounds, shot nine of 15. Darren Collison had 22 points, four assists, shot eight of 11, three of four from the three-point line. And you had Lance Stevenson with 10 points, two rebounds, shot four of nine, 0 of one from the three-point line. Once again, Toronto won this one, 106 to 99. Pacers didn't have much to worry about in this one with the loss because of the fact that the Trailblazers knocked off the Cavs, which we'll be talking about later on in this segment. Next up, though, we had the Charlotte Hornets facing off with the Atlanta Hawks in Atlanta, and Charlotte pulled out the win, 129 to 117. Marvin Williams had 17 points, three rebounds, three assists, shot seven to nine, three of five from the three-point line. Michael Kidd, Gilchrist had 11 points, two rebounds, shot five of five. Dwight Howard had 33 points, 12 rebounds, 13 to 20 shooting there. Dude had a big game. Kemba Walker had 24 points, 8 assists, 4 rebounds, shot 6 at 14, 6 at 10 from the three-point line. Nicholas Batum had 10 points, 16 assists, 10 rebounds, triple-double as we like to call it. 4 9 shooting, 2 of 4 from the three-point line. Frank Kaminsky off the bench had 11 points, shot 3 of 8, 2 of 4 from the three-point line. And then you had Jeremy Lamb with 11 points, 5 rebounds, 3 of 8 shooting. And then Malink Monk. Decent game, I guess, from him. Dude's been struggling all year, but it looks like he's been kind of off and on, but it looks like he's starting to kind of like put it together a bit. He had seven points, four rebounds, three of eight shooting, one of three from the three-point line. Like I said, those numbers aren't going to go out and jump at you, but if you've been following how he's been uh, pretty much the stat sheet, how he's been shooting the ball and all that, I guess you're encouraged just with any production that he's given out. As for the Hawks, you had John Collins with 21 points, 9 rebounds, shot 7 to 10, 2 of 3 from the three-point line. Tarion Prince had 22 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, shot 8 of 18, 6 to 12 from the three-point line. Dennis Schroeder, he had 17 points, 8 assists, shot 7 of 18. And then off the bench, you had Mike Muscala with only 5 points, 7 rebounds, shot 2 of 7 there. All right. I mean, nice little game for the Hawks here. Lost pretty much adding to the goal. 
DeAndre Ayton, trying to get him. All right, and I really hope that DeAndre Ayton falls. I do not want to see him go to Atlanta or Memphis. All right, I'd rather see him, much rather see him go to Phoenix if it had to be any of those three teams. But as for the Hornets, I mean, this is pretty much just like an empty season. I'm sure Michael Jordan had plans of them being a playoff team this year with bringing in Howard and having uh, Batum back and Kemba Walker and all that. But it's just, I mean, on paper, the Hornets do have solid, good players. I just don't know why they haven't been able to put it all together and pretty much like not even be like a team in the top five or anything that, like that, but just be like a, a 500 team who's competing for the eighth seed. Like they have players to, I guess, and that's just a matter of Malik Monk not working out. If Malik Monk... Mock's playing a whole lot better. I guess it elevates the bench a little bit more, but it's just pretty much like you'd expect with the players they got for them to be a little bit better. But as for the next game, we had the Philadelphia 76ers facing off with the New York Knicks, and of course, the Sixers won this one, 118 to 110. For the Sixers, you had Dario Sarge with 21 points, 12 rebounds, shot 7 to 13, 4 of 8 from the three point line. Robert Covington had 15 points, 5 rebounds, shot 5 of 8, 5 of 7 from the three point line. Joel Embiid, he had 29 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, shot 11 of 21, 2 of 5 from the three point line. Ben Simmons, yet again, another triple double, 13 points, two, um, 12 assists, 10 rebounds, shot 5 of 11. JJ Reddick had 18 points, shot 5 of 14, 2 of 8 from the three point line. And then off the bench, you had Aaron Ilyasova with 9 points, 8 rebounds, shot 3 of 13, 2 of 5 from the three point line. And Marco Bellinelli had, Bella, ugh, Bellinelli had 10 points, 4 of 7 shooting there off the bench. For the Knicks, you had Michael Beasley who got the start in this one. Dude's been very consistent this season, but no one is talking about him. All right, he had 24 points, 13 rebounds, seven assists, shot 11 to seven, uh, 11 to 16. With the season Michael Beasley's been having, he could very well find himself on a contending team next year. Michael Beasley is a good player. All right, it was always just a matter of I guess him putting his head on straight. Looks like he's finally got it on straight. Like I said, he had 24 points, 13 rebounds, seven assists. Tim Hardaway Jr. Poor shooting. Four shooting night from him, 3 of 13 from the field, 1 of 8 from the three-point line, 9 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists. And his cancer had 14 points, 10 rebounds, shot 5 of 11. Emmanuel Moutier had 12 points, 4 assists, shot 5 of 12. Courtney Lee, 16 points, 6 of 10 shooting there off the um, starting in this one. Off the bench, you had Frank Nielakina, 13 minutes played, 0 points, 3 assists, 1 rebound, 0 of 1 from the field. What a stat line. Trey Burke, he had 16 points, 7 of 11 shooting, 1 of 2 from the th um, three-point line. Trey Burke's been pretty good since he ended up signing back with uh, the Knicks. Been playing well this season off the bench, so good for him. As for the Sixers, they should still be the uh, sixth seed in the East right now. We'll as if the season ended today, they would be playing the Pacers. And that would be that would be a weird series. I think the Pacers would be the favorite, but I could very well go seven games. There's a lot of series, I think, besides the ones with the Warriors and Rockets in the first round that could go possible six, seven games. So playoffs are going to be fun, I think. As for the next game, we have the LA Clippers facing off with the Houston Rockets. And Houston won this one, 101-96. The Clippers put up a pretty good fight, but nonetheless, couldn't pull it out on this one. You had Tobias Harris with 29 points, 8 rebounds, 13-24 and 24 shooting from the field, 3-6 from the three-point line. DeAndre Jordan, 8 points, 18 rebounds, shot 4 of 9. Austin Rivers had 20 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, shot 10 of 18. Lou Williams had 14 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists, shot 6 of 18 from the field. For the Rockets, you had Trevor Reza with only 5 points, did have 8 rebounds, 4 assists though, only shot 2 of 10 in this one. P.J. Tucker, poor shooting night from him, 1 of 7 from the field, 1 of 5 from the 3-point line, 8 rebounds, 3 points. Clint Capella had 19 points, 12 rebounds, shot 9 of 16. Chris Paul didn't shoot the ball well at all in this one. Had uh, 3 of 13, 0 of 6 from the three-point line, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, only 11 points. James Harden, good game from him. 24 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds, shot 7 of 16, 2 of 8 from the three-point line. Off the bench, you had Luke Mbamute with... 10 points, 4 rebounds, shot 3 of 8. Eric Gordon, he had 23 points, 6 rebounds, shot 8 of 13, 7 of 9 from the 3-point line. Alright, if the Rockets want to have any chance of beating the Warriors, Eric Gordon needs to show up every single game and go out every single game. Alright, that's one way you beat the Warriors. Because you got it's not only you got to compete with the starting five, Kevin Durant, Thompson, Curry, Draymond, whatever center they put out there. Alright, you got to compete with that bench. They got one of the best benches in the league, probably one of the most consistent benches in the league. Not the type of bench that's going to go out like Brooklyn's and put up a bunch of points for you. But you know they're going to go out and do a job. Kind of like how, I guess you could say the New England Patriots. You got your star players, but after that, you got a bunch of guys who come in at certain positions and play well, and you don't have to really worry about them or worry about the team falling off when you got to go to them. And I know I just made a football comparison to the Golden State Warriors bench, but that's where we are in this time. All right. So, like I said, I mean, for the Clippers, I think you got Doc Rivers after the game complaining about refs, and that's one thing I can't stand. I get the NBA refs are bad, but. It's just a matter of if the NBA wants to do something about it, they can. But if not, can we stop complaining about the refs? I mean, like if a player, like, and that's one thing too. It's not just like, 
after the game, stuff like that. But even during the games, you got players who don't even get touched looking for the foul, or they know they're trying to initiate the contact and try and draw a foul that way and just complain. Stop complaining and just play the game for once. I can't stand that about the NBA, right? NBA is probably the most entertaining league out there as far as on the court, off the court type stuff. But it's just a matter like the whole complaining about the refs and complaining, yelling at the refs during the game is just getting really old, I feel. But as for the next game, we have the New Orleans Pelicans facing off with the San Antonio Spurs. Thought the Pelicans would be able to pull it out, but the Spurs won this one, 98-93. For the Pelicans, you had Nikolai Miritich, didn't shoot the ball well, got the start in this one, shot 3 of 12, 0 of 2 from the 3-point line, 10 rebounds, three, um, 6 points. Anthony Davis had 21 points, 14 rebounds, shot 8 of 19 from the field in this one. Each one more had 11 points, 4 rebounds, shot 5 of 9. Rajon Rondo had 6 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, shot 2 of 6. Drew Holiday had 24 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists. Shot 9 of 23, 2 of 5 from the three point line off the bench. You had Ian Clark, who's been very consistent for this team. 16 points, 2 rebounds, shot 6 of 11, 2 of 3 from the three point line. And then Emeka Okafor came off the bench in this one. 6 points, 5 rebounds, shot 2 of 4. Um, maybe it was just more so Emeka Okafor not starting this one, so you could have Miritic match up with Marcus Aldridge more. He threw Davis on there, but I think the Pelicans are better off. Again, just matchups permitting with Emeka Okafor coming, um, starting and having Meritich come off the bench, but who knows. For the Spurs, you had LaMarcus Aldridge with 25 points, 7 rebounds, shot 11 of 27. Patty Mills had 8 points, 4 rebounds, shot 2 of 12. Dude's been really struggling this year, I feel. Deontay Murray had 18 points, 12 rebounds, shot 8 of 13, 1 of 2 from the 3-point line. He's been playing pretty well this season. Danny Green has been pretty inconsistent, 5 points, 7 rebounds, shot 2 of 11, 1 of 8 from the 3-point line. And then off the bench, you had Manu Ginobili with the most minutes there, 11 points, Four rebounds, shot two of seven. I've been saying it lately that I think the Pelicans could knock off the Spurs in a seven game series in the first round. I still believe that. I still like the Pelicans going forward. A loss isn't going to take me off that bandwagon just yet. As for the next game, same old, same old for Detroit. They lost to the Denver Nuggets, 120-113. to 113. For the Pistons, you had Blake Griffin with 26 points, 9 assists, 6 rebounds, shot 9-21, 5 of 8 from the 3-point line. Reggie Bullock had 17 points, 4 assists, shot 7-12, 3-5 from the 3-point line. James Ennis had 5.6 rebounds. Andre Drummond, 21 points, 17 rebounds, shot 9-18. of 18. And then you had Ish Smith with 8.6 8. Um, 8. assists, shot 4-7. For the Nuggets, you had Paul Millsap with 14 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, shot 6 of 12, 2 of 4 from the 3-point line. Wilson Chandler with the goose egg in this one, 0 points, 0 of 6 from the field, 0 of 1 from the 3-point line, 8 rebounds, 5 assists. Nikolai Jokic with 23 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, triple-double there, 8 of 15 from the field, 2 of 5 from the 3-point line. The dude needs to develop a defensive game. He does that, he's the best center in the league. All right, he is. He does literally everything on the offensive side of the ball. Perfect. If he just were to play a little bit more defense, he'd be a whole lot better. All right, Jamal Murray, he had 26 points, 9 rebounds, shot 9 of 17, 5 of 8 from the 3-point line. Gary Harris had 11 points, 5 of 7, 0 of 1 from the 3-point line. Bit of a bit of a efficient night from him. Trey Lyles off the bench had 11 minutes, 3 of 4 shooting, 1 of 1 from the 3-point line, 9 points, 3 rebounds. And then you had Will Barton with 23 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, shot 8 of 16 from the field, 1 of 5 from the 3-point line. Nuggets are my sleeper team to watch for next year. That's a team that's developing. Jamal Murray, Gary Harris, Nikolai Jokic, those kids are going to be stars All right, going forward. They just need to develop a little bit more. Nuggets got to keep adding to that team, add some more veterans a little bit, and not guys like Paul Millsap where they're going to come in thinking they're the best player on that team. You need veterans in there that are going to defer to the young guys. All right, and even then, so fix up the bench a little bit more. Will Barnes, a nice little piece off of there, but kind of need to do it with what the Warriors do. Bring out guys that are going to be uh, consistent off the, um, out there. And as for the next game, we had the Phoenix Suns facing off with the Utah Jazz. Utah blew Phoenix out 116-88. to For Phoenix, you had Dragon Bender with 7.6 rebounds. Uh, terrible draft pick there by the Suns. TJ Warren, he had 19.6 rebounds, shot 8 of 18. Alfred Payton had 4 points, only played 17 minutes in this one. Devin Booker couldn't shoot the ball to save his life in this game. 3 of 18 from the field, 1 of 4 on the 3-point line, 12 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists off the bench. You had Josh Jackson with 17 points, 9 rebounds, 6 of 11 from the field, 1 of 1 from the 3-point line. You know what? A Devin Booker, Alfred Payton, Josh Jackson, TJ Warren... DeAndre Ayton starting five sounds mighty entertaining to me. All right. Now, I'd, rather, I'd still rather see him end up on the Kings, but if he ends up on the Suns, I don't know. I might have to move over to Phoenix and be a Suns fan. Who knows? But either way, that'd be a fun starting five to watch. 
As for the Jazz, though, we had Joe Ingles with 17 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists, shot 6 of 13 from the field, 4 of 9 from the 3-point line. Rudy Gobert had 21 points, 13 rebounds, shot 8 of 11. Ricky Rubio, 12 points, 11 assists, 5 rebounds, shot 5 of 15. Ricky Rubio got into it with some Suns players yesterday, and this isn't the first time he's got into it with um, some players of the team. I think a couple weeks ago he got into it with the Timberwolves. Maybe it might be Ricky Rubio who's causing the problems, right? If you've got two guys going out, um, two teams going out, one player within the span of two weeks, maybe it might be on Rubio. Who knows? All right? I'm not insinuating anything. I'm just saying maybe we take a look at it. But Donovan Mitchell, he had 23 points, four assists, six rebounds, shot 10 of 21, two of seven from the three point line. And then off the bench, we had Jonas Drebko with six points, five rebounds, shot two of five. Jay Crowder had 15 points, eight rebounds, five of 10 shooting from the field, two of five from the three point line in 28 minutes there. And you had Dante Hexham with 10 points, three of seven shooting. Once again, the Jazz won this one. 116 to 88. Really need to see the Jazz in the playoffs just because they're a real fun team to watch. And then for the final game of the night, we had the Cleveland Cavaliers facing off with the Portland Trailblazers, and the Trailblazers won this one 113 to 105. That makes it 11 in a row for the Trailblazers, all right? For the Cavs, you had LeBron James with 35 points, 6 assists, 14 rebounds, shot five, uh, 15 of 25. Jeff Green had 16 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, shot 5 of 12. George Hill, 8 points, 4 rebounds, shot 3 of 5. Kyle Korver had 19 points, shot 7 of 13, 3 of 8 from the 3-point line. Off the bench, you had Jordan Clarkson with 14 points there, 3 assists, 3 rebounds, shot 6 of 12. And then J.R. Smith had 3 points, 2 rebounds, shot 1 of 3, 1 of 2 from the 3-point line. LeBron James got into it with Ty Lue yesterday. Right? They were yelling back and forth at each other. I feel like it was more so LeBron yelling at Ty Lue from his spot on the bench to where Ty Lue was sitting, but... I don't know. Things aren't looking too good in Cleveland, all right? Maybe some problems brewing, all right? If you got LeBron James arguing with Ty Lue this, um, at this late in the season, Ty Lue not coming back next year if LeBron's going to stay there. So, I don't know. I don't even think Ty Lue comes back after next season, after this season anyway. So, we'll see. But as for the Trailblazers, you had Al Farouk Aminu with 11 points, 9 rebounds, shot 4 of 8. Mo Harkless had 17 points, 5 rebounds, shot 6 of 10 from the field. Joseph Nurkic had 7 points, 10 rebounds, shot 3 of 9. Damian Lillard, 24 points, 9 assists, 3 rebounds. Shot 7 of 20, 1 of 8 from the three point line. CJ McCollum had 29 points, shot 12 of 24 from the th field, 3 of 10 from the three point line. And then off the bench, you had Evan Turner with 11 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, shot 5 of 10, and 1 of 3 from the three point line. Once again, that's 11 in the row for the Trailblazers. We're not talking about the Trailblazers enough, all right? This is finally the year that they put it all together. They're the three seed. They're playing good basketball. It's about time. That's all we've been waiting for. So, I don't know. I like what they're doing. But that's going to wrap it up for this segment. That's how all the games went. Next up, we're going to be talking about the teams this week that were trending up and trending down. So, we'll be doing that. Fourth segment, we'll talk about the games that are going on in March Madness today. And we'll be making my picks for tonight's games along with talking about anything else going on in the world of basketball. So, stay tuned and we'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G smcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. So far today, what have we talked about? We've talked March Madness, talked about Arizona getting knocked out in the first round by Buffalo. Just overall, just bad by Arizona there. Should have got the ball to DeAndre Ayton a whole lot more than they did. Refused to. That's why they're out. All right, the dude is a grown man playing children. But either way, he's going to be in the NBA now. Don't want to see him in Memphis or Atlanta. Suns are cool. Uh, the Kings are cool. Other than that, I mean, if he falls like, to a team like Chicago, that'd be um, good too, but... I don't know. That won't happen. All right. We talked about that. 
Second segment we talked about yesterday's NBA games, which was Thursdays. We had the Rockets and Raptors furthering their leads in the both respective conferences. All right, you got LeBron yelling at Ty Lue. Not looking so good over there in Cleveland, all right? Not looking good at all. So we got that going on. Right now, we're going to be talking about the teams who were trending up and trending down this week. Got a few teams that were trending down, right? Celtics, Warriors, Cavs, all right, along with a couple others. We got trending down. Let's see who we got trending up. I'd say the Pacers are trending up, the Trailblazers still. And then teams like the Rockets, you know, teams that are still staying in it. So we'll be talking about those teams. Next segment, we'll be talking about uh, the rest of the March Madness games that have gone on today. Going to give out the scores for those, make my picks for tonight's games, and we'll pretty much talk about anything else that crosses my mind as far as the sport of basketball goes. So that's how the rest of the show is going to go. Let's get into it right now. So trending down. Let's start off with the Boston Celtics. That's kind of been the theme this week, all right? Team hit by injuries, and it's not like they're trending down just because they're playing bad basketball or anything like that. It's like the same reason with the Warriors trending down, right? Neither, neither team is playing bad basketball. It's just injuries are hitting them at the worst possible time. All right, so with the Celtics, like I said, you've had Marcus Smart out. Kyrie Irving's been deal, dealing with knee soreness. Al Horford's been out a couple games. Jalen Brown's out with a concussion still. Daniel Tice towards meniscus, so he's going to be out for the rest of the season. And uh, I think that's pretty much it right there. So you've had needed other guys to step up, which they have. I mean, Terry Rozier played well against the Wizards. Jason Tatum stepped up against the Wizards also. But nonetheless, I mean... The Celtics were a team for the majority of the season, at least I feel, were the number one team in the East as far as the standings go, number one seed, all right, playing well, and now it's just kind of look like everything's starting to catch up to them a bit, all right, the whole Gordon Hayward thing, I mean, that was a problem um, that they've had to deal with all year, all right, Celtics really, like I've said the last um, in the last few years, the Celtics with Isaiah Thomas, all right, had that score in Isaiah, go out and get his shot, all that stuff, but once you put the double on him, who's going to go get theirs after that? All right, and that's the problem with the Celtics this season. You had Kyrie Irving, all right, but no one when he's um, getting locked down or anything like that to go out and get their own points, like a Gordon Hayward would have done. All right, that was the plan this year. That's that was supposed to be different from the Celtics, right? Not just have one score, but finally have two guys who can go out and create their own shots, and that's been their biggest problem. And with the Celtics right now, like I said, with the injuries, I mean, this team isn't as good as they are without a Marcus Smart. All right, Marcus Smart isn't that going to be that guy that's giving you 15 a game off the bench or anything like that. He's not like an Eric Gordon, but he's that guy where he's going to come up and he's going to motivate the team. He's going to be like that little spark you got. All right, once he comes onto the floor, everything changes. He's going to be diving for loose balls, getting steals, coming up with blocks, pretty much just doing all the intangible stuff, all the hardworking stuff that doesn't show up in the stat sheet. All right, so that's what he is right there. You're going to be missing him. And with Kyrie Irving, I mean... With him um, pretty much missing games due to knee soreness all the time, you just got to hope that he's going to be not 100% because obviously if he's out missing games right now with knee soreness, he's not going to be 100% for the rest of the season. But you want to have him out there where you don't have it in the back of his mind or in the back of your mind. It's like, ooh, what if Kyrie can't play tonight? Or what if his knee just gives um, is just so bad one day that he's not going to be able to play in a playoff game? Right? You don't want to really be worrying about that. And as far as Jalen Brown goes, I mean, you need him out there too. That's another defensive player for the um, – for the Celtics that stepped up pretty big time this year. And you just want him more so out there in order to, I guess you could say, pretty much like Jalen Brown is that player where you know you got something, but it's not there yet, all right? Jalen Brown last year, the biggest problem with him was his jumper. He looked like he's kind of fixed that this season, but now it's just a matter of you want it to be more consistent, all right? Even with him out there, you got a bunch of athleticism, a guy who guard a bunch of positions, so that's one thing they're missing. So with the Celtics, it's not more so that they're playing bad. It's just that, they're getting hit with injuries at the worst possible time. We got like 15 or so games left. And with that, I mean, playoffs are going to be coming up soon. So you want your team to be 100% healthy, but with Smart out, Tice out, which is a big loss for the Celtics right there. It's going to be a bit of a struggle for them, but we'll see how it all plays out as the season dwindles down. And then like the Warriors too, you got Clay out, you got with a fractured thumb, I believe it was, Steph out with his ankle injury, Kevin Durant expected to miss the next game with uh, bruised, I think it was bruised ribs or his ribs are sore, so, I mean, the war, same with the Celtics, like the Warriors don't have the same problem as the Celtics, I'm sure these guys are all going to be ready for, um, for the playoffs, and I'm sure like, the Warriors are still the favorites to win the championship this year. That should be no doubts. But even then, so, I mean, they're going to be losing ground on the one seed, which I highly doubt that they care about just because of the fact that, I mean, the only difference between them being the one and two seed is the fact that the, if it came down to it, the Rockets would get a game seven at home rather than in Golden State. And that very well could be something that happens. I mean, I still don't think that the Rockets are going to be able to knock off the Warriors just because the Warriors are that good. But, I mean, game seven in Houston could be 
it could go any other way. So it doesn't like that's one thing that matters there. But as far as it all goes, I mean, you don't want like same with the Celtics. You don't want to go into the playoffs with all your guys coming back barely off of injury. All right, you want pretty much to go in with a rhythm. You want to go in playing hot, kind of like how the Thunder are right now, the Trailblazers. All right, they're going to be going into the playoffs looking real good. Same with the Pelicans and the Pacers. All right, that's how you want to go in. You don't want to go in limping in pretty much because that's going to be causing problems. You got to get everyone reacclimated reacclimated to everything. So. As far as the Warriors go, that is a team that's trending down right now. But like I said, it's not, it's not like trending down isn't like something to worry about, all right, as far as the team goes. Because right? we all know pretty much how it ends up. It's going to be them and the Rockets in the Western Conference Finals. And by the time we get to that point, this whole thing about everyone being injured on that team is going to be pretty much all in the rear view mirror. All right, so let's see. You got the Cleveland Cavaliers, another team that's trending down too. I think they're what, 6 7, 7 and 7 since um, they made all those trades. You got LeBron yelling at Ty Lue in yesterday's game. That's one thing, too. I kind of feel bad for Ty Lue. I don't think he's a bad coach. I just think it's that much harder to coach LeBron James than it is any other player in this league. I mean, LeBron's had four coaches in his career, um, four guys coach him in his career, I think it is. Maybe five if uh, there was someone else coaching him in the beginning of his career in Cleveland. You had Mike, like the ones I can name off the top of my head are Mike Brown, David Blatt, where that was quite the hire right there by Cleveland. David Blatt, and then you had Ty Lue and Eric Spolstra when he was in Miami. All right, and I'm pretty sure that LeBron might have had a different coach when he first started out in the NBA. I'd have to double check that. But either way, I mean, it's tough to coach a team with LeBron on it because you're expected to win. And pretty much the blame is never going to be put on LeBron. All right. Obviously, in the um, grander scheme of things, you have the media time. Oh, why isn't LeBron doing this? Why isn't LeBron doing that? But in reality, everyone's always going to look to the coach, the front office meeting. All right. The front office can't fire LeBron James. The front office can't put the blame on LeBron James. The front office could put the blame on a coach and bring in a whole new one, like how they did with David Blatt bringing in Ty Lue. All right. And didn't they fire Dave Blatt, David Blatt the year they won the championship midseason? They brought in Ty Lue after that. Ty Lue probably looked like one of the best coaches in the league after that. But either way, Cavs are a team that's trending down right now. There's no difference between the team they had before and the team they have now. Yeah, they got a little bit younger, but it's just it's not translating to wins and losses. All right. It just hasn't changed at all. There's still an average team with LeBron James. All right. Meaning that average meaning that their record since they've all been together. All right. And with this Cavs team, I mean I just, I don't see how they get to the finals this year, all right? They could get past Boston, but I don't see how they get past the Raptors. And even then, so you may get to the finals, but for what? To get swept? I mean, that's not really something that you really look forward to as a team going forward. So, I mean, they really got to pick it up. I'm not really sure what it is that fixes it, whether it be Kevin Love coming back, because you got LeBron saying that he does miss playing with Kevin Love. And Kevin Love has always been that kind of scapegoat for that team. So now it's just pretty much, I don't know, maybe they're starting to realize Kevin Love's value. But I feel like it's all, like, this whole Cavs pretty much thing that they got going on here, being six and seven, seven and seven, whatever the record is now since they got everyone, um, all these new players. Now it's pretty much it hasn't blown up in their faces yet because everyone's saying, "Wait for Kevin Love, wait for Kevin Love, wait for Kevin Love." And if Kevin Love gets back and he doesn't really fix anything as far as the wins and losses go, then what do you do there? What's the next? What's the next excuse? I'm not sure, but either way, that's a team that's trending down. Let's see who else we got trending down. The Pistons are always trending down year after year. I mean, that team traded for Blake Griffin. Looked like they had a plan. It turns out they had no plan whatsoever. All right, Spurs are getting a little bit better. Let's see who else is trending down right now. I think that just might be the three biggest teams right there. Um, yeah, pretty much everyone else, like everyone else, like the tanking teams, I can't really say they're trending down. If anything, they're trending up just because they're tanking and pretty much trying to get a higher draft position. But like, there's nothing changing with them. All right. But as far as the team's trending up, I mean, you got the um, Indiana Pacers. That's a team who has inserted themselves as a team, pretty much forced themselves upon all these sports takes as far as a team that can make it out the East because the East is very well wide open. All right. Right now, the Raptors are the favorite in that conference just because of the fact that they're the best team by far in the regular season. And it's just a matter with the Raptors. We can start trusting them once they play a whole lot better in the playoffs and once Kyle Lowry decides to show up. All right. Kyle Lowry to this day has not shown up in one playoff game, I feel. But either way, if he does play well, then there's nothing to worry about with the Raptors. But like I said, with the Pacers, they pretty much force themselves upon all these sports takes. All right. Now, you got to talk about them as a team that can come out of the East. They got a good team. Victor Oladipo, I really like Bogdanovich. I like Turner. All right, Thaddeus Young's been that kind of key veteran that you need, pretty much the guy that's going to show up and play consistently enough to where you don't have to worry about uh, that spot that he's in. Then you got Al Jefferson off the bench kind of leading that unit, along with Darren Collison, who you got back playing point guard. Corey Joseph has done well in the starting five since he came in for Collison. And, I mean, the team as a whole has just been playing really well. And then you got, like, the X-Factor type players and Lance Stevenson, all right? Lance Stevenson is always that guy where 
he's not the greatest basketball player and he's not the worst basketball player. He's not going to go out and win you games or anything like that. But that's just like, a, he's like a Marcus Smart type, right? He's not flashy or anything like that, but he has the intangibles. He has the it factor that helps the team. So right now, the Pacers are very well trending up, all right? Along with the, the Rockets still trending up, all right? Haven't taken their foot off the gas pedal, starting to pull away from Golden State a bit. So, I mean, they've been playing really well. I'm sure Houston's got to have all the confidence in the world as a team who thinks they could beat the Warriors going into the playoffs. So that's one team that's trending up. Then you got the New Orleans, um, the Portland Trailblazers just won 10 in a row. They've been trending up for a couple of weeks, playing really well. Damian Lillard, this is a um, like this is one of the, like, I don't want to say the first year, but like the first real year where he's actually taken this team and elevated them pretty much made them better than what they are as far as all around talent like Damian Lillard has become like that leader on the team I'm saying and I'm not trying to say like Damian Lillard wasn't doing this before but this is the first time I feel like that's pretty much they've reaped the benefits of it now because before I mean they were more so like a five through AC type team who got bounced in the first round year after year except for what was it that one year they played the Rockets where they had Dwight Howard and James Harden I think it was and Damian Lillard hit that game winning three to clinch the series winner there so now you got the Trailblazers who are playing well. And the only thing that really stinks about it is that the winner of whatever series they win gets to play against the Warriors or Rockets in the next round. All right? This Raptors team is very good, but the downside of it is the fact that you got to play the Rockets or Warriors in the second round. So, oh, either way, they're trending up. Pelicans been playing well lately. Who else has been playing well? The Jazz. That's a team that's been trending up too. They've been playing real good basketball since the end of the All Star break. All right, Donovan Mitchell's been playing well. Ricky Rubio he's been playing well for some reason. Keeps getting into it with other teams, but nonetheless, he's playing well. You got Jay Crowder, Jonas Durepko that have been solid players off the bench for the Jazz, and you got Rudy Gobert who's um, seen to pick up his play a little bit more. Started off the season kind of slow, but now he's been playing a whole lot better. So that's a team that's trending up there. And I think those are pretty much all the teams that I think are trending up. We did three that are trending down, three that are trending up. So I guess we'll just stop there. But for the next segment, we're going to be, what are we doing? We're making my picks for tonight's games, talking about all the March Madness games that have gone on today. Got some that are just went final. We'll be talking about that. And we'll be talking about anything else that crosses my mind as far as the sport of basketball goes. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. All right, and welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Let me tell you how the show has gone so far for those that need a quick reminder. All right, talked about March Madness in the first segment. Arizona killed my bracket. I don't know why. Like, I need someone to tell me why I continuously pick Arizona year after year after year to win a title. I have no clue why. All right, from the Stanley Johnson days to now, for some reason, I always go with Arizona. They're the fun team to watch, right? That's the fun team to watch. And I got to realize, I feel like it's just the team, like they play pickup basketball and you can't be doing that in the tournament, right? They're really athletic, but it's just more so like they're not, I don't know, they just don't have that it factor that the Dukes or the North Carolinas have. All right, you can't tell me that North, like North Carolina, this is probably one of the, I don't, I don't know, this isn't like the greatest team they've had, all right? But nonetheless, every time they're in the tournament, ACC tournament or whether March Madness tournament, whatever it may be, they always have like the intangibles, like they know what it takes to get there. And it just might be a fa the fact that Roy Williams is their coach and Sean Miller's Arizona's, but... Arizona, you got to stop letting me down year after year. All right, so yeah, we talked about that. Second segment, we recapped Thursday's NBA games, did all that. You got LeBron yelling at Ty Lue. Trailblazers won 10 in a row. Jazz won what? How many? Uh, the Jazz on a win streak right now? Jazz are currently on a eight-game win streak. So yeah, they've been on fire lately too. All right, let's see what else we talked about. Last segment, we talked about the teams that are trending up and trending down. You got the Warriors, Cavs, Celtics trending down right now due to a bunch of injuries. Cavs. More so just 
I don't know. It looks like they're starting to implode a bit. All right. They really need um, Kevin Love back. And if that doesn't fix it, then the Cavs are in big trouble. All right. As far as the Warriors and Celtics go, I mean, you got Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry all injured right now. All right. Let's see. For the Celtics, you got a bunch of guys out there. So it's just the worst time for them to be getting injuries. And the teams that are trending up, the Jazz, the Trailblazers, and the Pacers right now. I mean, Pacers are a team that's kind of that have inserted themselves in the conversation as far as who can make it out the East. And they very well can. It's not like the Pacers are just playing well. So, like, oh, we'll be nice to throw them in that conversation. Like, they're legitimately in that conversation. They might be, as of right now, based on how everyone has been playing in the East on pure, on pure form right now, the Pacers might be the second best team in that conference. All right. And I'm not even like being like over exaggerating or anything. They very well might be the second best team in that conference. And then with the Portland Trailblazers, I mean, this is the first year they finally put it all together, I feel right now. They're third in the uh, West, 42 and 26. Two games up on the four seed, Oklahoma City Thunder, 24 and 11 at home this year, 18 and 15 on the road. All right, on an 11 game winning streak. They've been playing great basketball. They're not giving up too many points on defense. They're not scoring too many points on offense. But nonetheless, I mean, if you're playing pretty good defense, you don't have nothing to worry about. So they've been playing pretty well there. And then whether the Jags, Jazz and the, uh, the yeah, Jazz, they've been playing well. Like I said, eight in a row they've won, playing extremely well. Really hope they make the playoffs right now. They are currently the seventh seed. And speaking of that, I mean, in the West right now, like I said, the last two seeds, they're going to come down to whoever wants it more. I mean, you got Utah and San Antonio in those spots right now. And you got the Clippers and Denver Nuggets on the outside looking looking in, both a game back of both teams. So it's going to be interesting how it all plays out. I'm not sure if the um, Jazz and Spurs play each other for the rest of the year or along with if any of these teams play each other for the rest of the year. But nonetheless, it's going to be fun to watch. All right, and one thing, too, I like how a lot of the teams in the West right now from, I guess, up until the Lakers, they're all at a plus as far as point differential. So they've all been playing pretty well this season. All right? At one point, I thought the East was better than the West. But the West, like they got the Jazz, you got the Clippers and Nuggets after the top eight in the um in the East, I mean, you got Detroit and Charlotte, so it's not really much going on there. But either way, those are the teams that are trending up. And now we're going to be talking about other stuff going on in basketball. Going to re- uh, talk about some scores going on today. March Madness and going to be making some picks for tonight's games in the NBA. All right, so let's do that. Let's talk basketball. Let's talk one thing that caught my eye on Twitter. All right. You know how the NBA, the were um, released the uh, last two minute reports, all right, talking about which calls the officials got right, which calls the officials got wrong. Well, yeah, they've been doing that. And I guess the NBA referee Twitter account, the official one, came out and talked pretty much talking about how it's unfair that they released these reports and how they're wrong and how there's different circumstances that go into the last two minutes. And that's one thing that kind of caught my eye, all right? Obviously, officials ref the last two minutes completely different than how they official, than they ref the, um, First, like the entirety of the game, the rest of the f- the forty six minutes before, all right. And I guess that's one thing that we all need to realize with the refs is that if they call it a foul earlier, chances are they're not going to call it a foul later, depending on who's winning, who's not, how much time is left, what's going on, what the game's looking like. Are they just going to let it go and let the teams go back and forth, or are they going to slow the game down a bit? All right. The refs in the NBA are probably the personally. I think they're the worst refs in professional sports, but they're probably the most misunderstood refs in professional sports too. And they do get a real bad rap, and I think it's a little unfair, but nonetheless, I mean, there's no consistency in the NBA as far as calls go. And that's probably where like the bad rap comes from. There's just no consistency whatsoever. We're not sure what exactly a foul is, not sure what a foul isn't, not sure if they're going to call it here or they're going to call it there. You're just never like really sure what's going on with the refs in the NBA. And I think that's just one of the biggest reasons why you got... um players yelling at them, you got coaches, you got Doc Rivers saying the refereeing was terrible yesterday, all right, it's just pretty much, there needs to be some consistency, all right, they got to call it the same way they call it from the tip-off to the end of the game, they got to call it consistently throughout, because if not, you're going to consi- um, continue to have this little tension between the refs and the league and the players and all that, so they really got to figure it out, but either way, I mean, that's one thing that caught my eye there, NBA drama with the refs is always fun to pay attention to, I don't know, it's just kind of, it's just kind of different, you know, but either way, I mean, let's see what we got going on for tonight, uh, for today's college basketball games in the tournament. Let's see what the scores from the games that have passed. And again, we're recording this earlier, so some of the other games that are going on right now as I'm recording this are going to be over. But let's see. We had Cincinnati beat Georgia State 68-53. North Carolina beat Lipscomb 84-66. Purdue beat Cal State Fullerton 74-48. I didn't even know Cal State Fullerton was in this tournament. Then you had Marshall with the upset. We are Marshall, one of the best 
sports movies ever. All right, Marshall won 81-75, beat Wichita State. Number 13, Marshall knocks off the four seed. Providence, a team who I had pulling off with the upset against Texas A&M, lost 70, or 73-69. to Texas A&M was the seven seed. Providence was the 10 seed. Butler, I mean, this was – like, if you didn't pick Butler, I mean, you had to have been an Arkansas fan. You always pick Butler in the tournament at least once. And Butler won 79-62, pulled off the upset. 17 points right there. I mean, Butler is – Ever since Brad Stevens left Butler, has still been a Brad Stevens type team. They're not flashy or anything like that. They play good, organized basketball, and that's how they continue to win. So Butler won 79-62, 10 seed upsetting the number seven. All right, later on tonight, we got Kansas State facing off with Creighton. I got Creighton winning that one. We got Michigan State versus Bucknell. Michigan State always pulls off uh, some type of uh, bad game, whether it be getting upset early on in the tournament or later. Maybe this is one of those games, but I'm going to go with Michigan State. Then we got Texas Southern playing number one, Xavier. Xavier's been that team that's always hungry around as one of the top basketball pro, 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 uh, programs, but no one really talks too much about them. Then we got Charleston facing off with Auburn. All right, Still weird to see Auburn and Alabama as good college basketball programs. Virginia facing off today. All right, you got Syracuse playing TCU. Syracuse could be that team um, that makes a little run in the tournament. Didn't really play well in the regular season, but Syracuse always, to be, always seems to be a solid tournament team. All right, They could be pulling off the upset there. I'm going to go with Syracuse. I'm going to have the 11 seed knocking off the 6 seed. All right, and Then we got Florida State playing Missouri. Going to get them well. Uh, Better look at uh, Michael Porter Jr. in his second game. I got Missouri winning that one. Then we got New Mexico State playing Clemson. That could be very well be an upset there. New Mexico State always plays good basketball. Clemson's always only favored by three and a half. So we got that. And then for the games going on right now, as I'm recording this, we got Virginia Tech or West Virginia playing Murray State. All right. Love the press defense that West Virginia plays. They're up 51 45 right now. And then we got Texas playing good basketball today, facing off with Nevada. Texas is up 46 42. Nevada is the higher ranked team. So we'll see if Texas can pull off the quote unquote upset. So Murray State's actually playing pretty well right now, too. So we'll see by the time. Uh, the podcast is out. We should know what happened. So let's make my picks for tonight's NBA games. I think we got a bunch going on today. Usually for Fridays, we don't have too many games going on, but I think we got at least five, six left today. So let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so six games going on tonight. We got the Celtics facing off with the Magic in Orlando. Celtics have been dealing with um, injuries. So have the Magic. Aaron Gordon's going to be out of this one. Still dealing with a concussion, I believe it is. So I'm going with the Celtics in this one. Should be a nice, easy win for them. And then we got the Brooklyn Nets facing off with the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, not really too much to think about here. I'm going with the 76ers. They've been playing good basketball, and I think they're going to be able to knock off the Nets. Then we got the Mavericks pace, facing off with the Toronto Raptors. Toronto's been on a tear for the second half of the season, right? Absolute tear. No one's been able to stop them. I'm going with Toronto against the Mavericks, obviously. Then we got the Clippers facing off with the Thunder. Thunder have been playing good basketball. Clippers are trying to fight for that uh, eighth seed, seventh seed there. I'm going to go with the Clippers. think they're going to want it more tonight. All right, the Thunder are going to play a good game, but it's just the Clippers got to win games like this, so I'm going with them. Then we got the Kings facing off with the Warriors. I'm going with the Kings in this one, all right? No Kevin Durant, no Steph Curry, no Klay Thompson. Even if Draymond does play, I still got the Kings, all right? Coming off of a nice little win against the Heat a couple days ago. Played extremely well in that one. De'Aaron Fox hit a... Hit the game tying floater as time expired in regulation so i'm gonna go with the kings in this one think they're gonna play really well plus the kings always get one win against the warriors i think um every year then we got the heat facing off with the lakers all right he'd have been a team that have been hit by injuries too hassan whitehead and Dwayne wade have been out last couple of games i'm not sure exactly if they're playing tonight but uh, i think i'm gonna go with the he'd have been playing good basketball without those two goran drag just kind of taking on a bit of a, like a leadership role i guess you could say been the best player on that team this season by far but uh, I'm going to go with the, yeah, I'm going to go with the Heat. I think they're going to be able to pull it out. I want to go with the Lakers, but I just have it in my gut. The Heat are going to win. So those are my picks for tonight. Like I said, I got the Celtics beating the Magic, Sixers beating the Nets, Raptors beating the Mavericks, Clippers beating the Thunder, Kings beating the Warriors, and the Heat beating the Lakers. Three upset picks tonight. Clippers over Thunder, Kings over Warriors, and Heat over Lakers. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today's show. Today we talked March Madness, Thursday's NBA games, teams trending up, trending down. Talked about the refs and their relationship with the NBA. And we gave up the scores for the March Madness games going on right now. Remember, we got a couple more going on later tonight. And we made my picks for tonight's games, as you just heard. So thanks for listening to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. I am your host, Jesse Tapia. We'll be back on Monday to talk more March Madness and everything else going on in the NBA. So stay tuned, and we'll talk to you later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. 
part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.